Hi there, I'm Matt Holland and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. This is our World Cup show and we are reviewing the last 16 games. It's been eventful. It has. It's actually been arguably the best World Cup ever. Everyone keeps saying that. Um, arguably. Quality wise, probably not, but in terms of, in terms of entertainment, and there's been so many twists and turns and a lot of small teams. Lot of, look, look at the list of big teams gone home already, um, a drama all around, and yeah, just just impossible to watch. And I think the biggest way of gauging it is, even I know it's in the office and stuff like that, people that wouldn't necessarily be football fans in general, they wouldn't watch the Premiership or League of Ireland week in, week out, but they're almost glued to it and they're they're having conversations with you about it. I think that's the biggest indication of, of how good the World Cup is going to date. Yeah. Uh, the game we're going to talk about first is uh, France 4, Argentina 3. Uh, Messi out and, mm -hmm. you know, Mbappe looks at the future. He's carrying that torch, isn't he? Um, it, it's fascinating to watch his development the last couple of years. You know, he's heavily linked to three or four teams a couple of years ago and the rumours that he went nearly joined them and they held on and He's turned into an absolute superstar, and my God, such pace! Absolutely blistering pace. Like the one, the run that he made, like to, to win the penalty, like he just destroyed. I know you, you can look at that midfield, Mascherano played in China. Probably legs are going a little, but he absolutely rinsed him and was just burned it. And he's just a class, class act and a joy to watch. Yeah, and he shows all the composure in the world to. To score the two goals. He's every aspect to his game, isn't he? He's the, the, the that composure, the skill, the speed. He's almost unmarkable. Yeah. Um. And then you know, look at it's pro it could be Messi's last World Cup. Who knows? Yeah, it certainly looks like that, doesn't it? Argentina, right from the off, are a mess. I know they got the late equaliser to, to get them by and drag them out of the group stages, but they're just there's no structure, there's no balance to the team. They're flip sided. You can argue that they're not playing their best players. Um, they're not getting the best out of Messi. They're not getting the best out of anybody. They just look completely jaded and just there for the taking. And it's no surprise. I would have felt like uh, judging their performance. I know they they pushed it up a bit against France, but I didn't think they deserved to get out of the group stages. Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, they were very lucky, and their group wasn't even that good, no. and they got rinsed by Croatia. As well, uh, who looked brilliant against them, and they totally dominated them in every aspect, and it just kind of showed the signs were there after the Croatia game uh, that something wasn't right, and them like kind of like Spain, they just look like a mess. They they just look so unorganized. It the manager doesn't seem to have any control at all. Like um, he seems to be it was laughable at times. I think it was the the last qualifier or the last round, the group phases where they were chasing the game and. It, it felt like it looked like, you know, I know the clip may be altered or whatever, but Messi, the coaching staff are asking Messi, is it okay to bring Aguero on? You know, there's no discipline, there's no structure. It's just, and when you're at situations like that, no matter how good that player is, you have to have someone with discipline and, you know, someone in control. And it, they look like just a crowd of kids playing in the park, no structure at all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to see where Argentina go there, just blessed with so many good strikers, but yeah, can't do it with them. Yeah, it, for me, I keep going back to it, but there's no, they had no midfield, they had no uh, pace in midfield, and they just looked like a load of forward players stuck together and didn't really know what to do. Yeah, and another thing is, you look at all the teams with lesser you know, lesser players, but they all fight for the cause. It's all these individuals trying to prove who's the best striker for them, that's what it seems. Um, another game uh, was Uruguay uh, to Portugal one. Yeah, um, a little later, and you know, all the talk was before the game was almost before both sets of games really was that the Messi Ronaldo stupid debate not going to get involved in it, <laughs> just appreciate both both players exactly. for for goodness sake. But it was it, it once Argentina got knocked out and, and Messi was going home, the whole conversation, the whole dilemma was going on. Of what's Ronaldo going to do? And you know, it was a another game that probably mightn't be one for the purists, but fascinated by it and I have to say you know a lot of people probably don't like some of their their tactics and their snideness at times I just gotta enjoy enjoy the um I spoke about on the live video there we spoke together about it how appreciate th that much desire to win like you compare their desire uh, and their structure compared to Argentina it's miles apart isn't it and you know they don't get me wrong they have some wonderful players like the two the best strikers in, in world football Suarez and Cavani um and they've you know the that got, first goal was unbelievable. Oh, that ball in by Suarez yeah. and then Cavani. Yeah. Oh. 
and it's a partnership that seems to work pretty well like they they, they seem to suit each other and you know towards the end then at the end when they were hanging on Suarez shows that other style to his play that warrior uh, that again I, t- I spoke about in the live video that clip towards the end where he's gone from one wing to another just to hold the ball up and shoving guys around um, is I love I love watching someone that's so determined um, to, to, to win football games and yeah no they're, they're going to be very hard to beat as well yeah and we're talking about um, Messi going out obviously Ronaldo's out and you know it seemed like it was kind of his you know his uh, World Cup to lose from a lot of people from the first game against Spain everyone's like oh Ronaldo this that and the other they're going to win it they're going to win it mm-hmm. they won the Euros uh, are we surprised to see them lose this game? Uh, no I, I just felt that Uruguay have just too much Desire, great. And, great, and and probably they were that ugly side of them. They were willing to do anything, like you saw various phases of the play where they just left their foot in. They put guys two foot up in the air, were kicking them. They would just do too much, and as as good as Ronaldo is, I think he was carrying that team a lot. He did it quite well, you know. But I just felt there was there was definitely more of a team structure and more of a desire from Uruguay to get them over the line. And I think that that ultimately was the. Was the difference really? Yeah, they just seem to be relying too heavily on uh, on Ronaldo. To, if he's not going to score the goals, where are they going to come from? Type of thing. <laughs> um, and it was just, you know, I'm kind of glad they're gone in a way because I think there's better teams. Like it's all well and good having Ronaldo and Messi, but if they're not stepping up to it, then you know, I'm yeah. happy to see them out. I'm happy to see teams like Croatia progress. You're and, a boy, I enjoy progress. watching teams like Croatia and Uruguay that just have it's that belief. You can see how much it means to them. Yeah, my team I was delighted to see uh, go out with Spain. Just simply, <laughs> um, simply just because, just there's so much talent there, and there's just there's so there's so much bitching between them and stuff like that. I'd say you're delighted because of Sergio Ramos element of things. It was funny watching the game. I always have a soft spot for Spain. It probably goes back again to my Liverpool boys, but when Rafa was there, you know, with so many Spanish players in the team, Torres. Yeah. Alonso, etc. And when it's like they, uh, Everton were Nigeria. Yeah. <laughs> but when when they made the break, like they, they you, you forget like we're used to them being contested and winning tournaments, but you go back maybe five, ten years, they were they were the all as the one that fell short. And when they eventually made the, the breakthrough, I was, I was delighted and they played some wonderful football. Like that Torres via via the partnership was was out of this world. Xavi and Iesta, it was just a beautiful, beautiful team to watch. And they still had Silva and Mata oh, yeah, and the yeah, likes as yeah. well. Um, Hayes Navas was top class back then. As well. Yeah, it was just it was they they kind of revolutionized the game to a certain extent. They brought in the how do I put it the good tippy tappy. It was the fast, quick tippy tappy. Teams have gone on, and the Spain this current Spain team is a, an example of how not to play tippy tappy football. You know, just slow, pedestrian, almost an arrogance to the game. They felt like they were gonna you know we'll just stroll around here and we'll we'll get the breakthrough. In that aspect, uh, yeah, of course, and you know, I'd be lying if the, the Ramos issue as well, you know, you know, particularly at all that happened. And I thought he let his, I thought he let his team down by just shit house tactics at the end. You know, he's messing around, um, you know, trying to mess with with their keeper. He's not back. He delays the Aspas penalty. You know, he's put more pressure on his teammates, and you know, you know, just it's it's stuff that you don't like to see. Um. The whole thing of you know sacking their manager two days before the tournament was just it was it was it was des- it was slappable. destined for for downfall it really was like the, no matter you know, how good the players are you you have to have we spoke about Arge- Argentina not having structure in the management but to lose it two days before like the only positive thing to come out of that yeah. is it makes uh o two with Saipan you know look like a, a just a, an absolute drop in the ocean compared to compared to that and it they look like there was still a bit of. There's always at times that Real Madrid, Barcelona sort of divide. And I think that, you know, I suppose the Barcelona players were probably going to blame Real Madrid for, you know, tapping up the manager yeah. and, and causing that issue. But uh, yeah, no, probably delighted to see them go. Yeah, and as well as there, you know, again, I always remember sitting there, I was watching watching the game with mate um, up in Belfast. And they're just, again, they're just, there's so many players. It's just like, it's like watching a bunch of kids uh, all chasing the ball, like a hive of bees. Swarm into one area where the ball is. They just in that, that midfield, bar Isco, they just they looked terrible. Yeah, like you go back to the good Spanish teams. They had so much movement, so many runs from deep, so many quick passes, breaking the line. This was just tip, 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 tap back and forth. They could have done it all night and they still wouldn't have scored. Yeah, I totally agree with you there. Uh, Croatia, Denmark. Uh, are, are Croatia serious uh, contenders now? 
it's funny, even though they're true, I was I wasn't that impressed with them against Denmark. I know they did enough to get the win, and you know you look at Modric missing the penalty in extra time, serious balls to to take one in the shootout. Then, um, they did enough, but it's funny. Like I would have said before the game, they had a better chance of winning. If that makes sense, they probably disappointed me a, a little. I think they're still one of those potential dark horse teams. It would take a lot to happen for them to win it, but they do have a nice balance of. Team spirit, which is important. We've discussed that loads of times. Good defensive structure and a bit of magic with, with Modric. So, yeah, as I said, we take and a lot of... goal scoring, Manzoukic. Absolutely, yeah. Um, they take a lot of boxes there, don't they? Um, they will have to play a hell of a lot better than they did against uh, Denmark, though. The thing is that they don't have a lot of strength and depth. So, like, if the injuries would hit them hard... Yeah, a couple I mean, of suspensions would The midfield done. is strong, but other than that, they're not strong in many other areas. Yeah. But, uh, I mean... Uh, Call it bitterness, call it whatever you want. I'm kind of happy to see Denmark out. Really? Yeah, yeah. To be honest, that didn't really get me that much because I think we left that up behind. I think the biggest issue was our tactics and in, in that tie as opposed to... Yeah, but Denmark. I just remember us getting abused by Danish fans for a lot of time, so I was kind of happy to see them go. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Fair, fair enough. They kicked <laughs> us while we're down, so we're kicking you <laughs> while you're down. Enjoy the flight home, guys. Yeah, I'll see you in Copenhagen <laughs> in November or September, whenever. Yeah, um, look, uh, Brazil. Talk about our both Mexico, uh, both our tips. Are they going to get you the money? Um, I'm hoping so. They still look like they can go up a few levels. Um, they always seem to come alive in the second half. As t- as uh, teams get tired, Brazil seems to get stronger. They don't really look like um, they're really that much under the pressure a lot of the time. Mexico gave it a good go for the first 20 minutes. Then you could see they got Fade, tired. Yeah. Um all credit to them. Uh, you know, they always tend to kind of get to around the last 16 and then kind of fizzle out in fairness to them. But I, I like Mexico and I think maybe in the next World Cup they might progress a little bit more if they can bring through some more uh, Yeah, potentially, players. yeah. They give it a right good go, as you said. But Brazil, they'll. one of the reasons why I went with Brazil is because I always used to wa- enjoy watching Brazil as a kid because they were always this fantastic, skillful team. You know, they would ju- your jaw would drop just watching them as a kid. Yeah. You'd go up the garden then and tr- fall on your ass trying to copy some of the, the skills and stuff. They've kind of gone a little bit back from that. They've kind of gone a bit more, we're not as gung-ho, we're a bit more calm and composed and they wait for the moment. And that's what you see a lot of the times is they kind of stay solid, let teams have their proper patch and then towards the end they kind of just do enough to get over the line. There's You always feel like if they badly needed to, they can go up a couple of more gears and they have a little bit of strength and depth as well. They have a couple of other little options and particularly in attacking sense. Um, I, I just think they're going to be, I think they're starting to click into gear. Neymar, despite all the, you know, the bullshit that goes along yeah, with him, he, he's head. horrible to watch at times, you know, but he has, he has, you know, unbelievable aspects to his game as well. He's on, when he puts his head to football and cuts out all the bullshit, he's, he's on pretty much unmarkable. Um, and I think there's a good little bit of interplay between himself and you know, like of Willem and Coutinho, etc. Et 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 I no, just, me, you will say. yeah, you hear we go. I may as well come out with we'll I just look, I'm hugely biased again, but I just think he adds, I know, I, I see your points. Yeah, go on. I think he adds a lot more balance. I love Jesus as a player. I think there's two options you either go, you play the two of them up front, or if you're playing one up front, it has to be for me you know, on its own, and then bring Jesus on when the game is getting a little bit more stretch and he'll be better suited to come on and. Just run. He's more of a direct number nine where Firmino is kind of one that knits it all together. And, you know, nice little setup play. Took his goal. You know, nice little move to, to, to get the second goal. Yeah, I think Neymar pretty much made that goal. He did. It was a, that, but, that's without I mean. that run. Yeah. yeah. Um, to, uh, by Firmino. Obviously. Yeah, but I, I didn't think Jesus was making a lot of those runs. He just looks like he's a little bit... Confidence is a little bit rattled. I think he needs a goal or two just to, to kick him into life. I thought he was doing a couple of cool, skillful things out on the wing. He skinned some fellow with a lovely little touch inside touch. Yeah, there's, there's nice touches. He's not far off, don't get me wrong. Yeah. And he's still, look, Jesus, he's still a wonderful... He just needs something wonderful, to off his one, ass. Yeah, there you go. There's the old cliche. Yeah. Um, but, but can Neymar carry them to the final? I don't think it's necessarily carry them to the final. I think that's disrespectful to a lot of the other good players that they have there. He definitely pushed them forward. But he's the one putting the ball in there. Or if not, he's not putting it out, he's putting it a play for others. Yeah, yeah, no, I get that point. He's definitely the most influential player out of them, but I think you know that that front three behind it, it does a lot of damage together. Yeah, and I do think William and Coutinho have been class as well. I'm just saying, if you look at the like the the, the game yeah, itself, William, it was a goal by Neymar, yeah, and it was true. yeah, uh, it, it, he it, was passing that he wasn't shooting. Yeah, no, it was yeah. So no, yeah. I mean, he did create the the two goals essentially. And am I right in saying they haven't conceded a goal? 
Um, I'm or, not sure. Comments or listeners will will verify that, but I'm not sure. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, that's a fact. But so they we'll definitely haven't. They definitely haven't leaked money yet. Anyways, they've no, been. but the thing is, they have strength in in, in depth in terms of defensive midfielders and stuff like that. And um, they have if they if Casemiro gets injured, they've got Fernandinho who's had an unbelievable season. He can't get into the team. And you even looked at Marcelo got off injured in one of the group phases, and they bring on Luis. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. They're just bringing on and quality. Been a yeah, you just bring on quality. And then, the I, I was even actually playing FIFA the other day, and they they had like. Uh, Alexandrov, Juventus, and then if you go right back, you've got Dani Alves, you've got um, what's his name, uh, Danilo, and then you've got Wagner as well. So oh, it's just a sickening, uh, sickening strength and depth, classness. Um, another game I wanted to speak to you about was the cracking game last night, uh, Belgium and Japan. What a game! Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was I had a bit of a hectic weekend, and I came home and I watched the. I was watching the game in my front room and I fell asleep. Really? And a game no, like that? No, no, no. It was 0-0 no, no, and I fell asleep. Okay, so I woke back up and it was 2-0 to Japan. I always thought I was dreaming. And then <laughs> uh, then obviously I got woken up by the screams of the commentators and stuff like that. But uh, that you take over. Yeah, no. Um, you you said you were dreaming when you thought you saw the, saw the result. Japan were definitely dreaming at that stage in the game. And they totally deserved their 2-0 lead um, and possibly deserved another goal or two. Um, they were that dominant in the game and they, they played some wonderful, wonderful football. Really, really gave it give it their all and you push forward at every opportunity. And that, unfortunately, that's what undoes, undoes the, undid them in the end. Just going home pretty much with that corner. But, you know, they're at 2-0, they look like they're cruising. You're thinking like the first one is just a ball down, down the right channel and, you know, Tongan kind of puts out a foot, misses, and you think you think with the guy when he's in the box, and you think he's taking it too far, and he just comes inside and great and finish. Get, oh, what a finish! So it like takes you up off your seat, and then the second one as well, another absolute screamer of a shot into the bottom corner, and you're thinking, wow, this is incredible. We're watching, there's there's even more drama in this World Cup. They come back then, Tongan. Did you think they were going to come back? I did. I said I said to him at the time, I texted them they're going to win three two. I just. Um, I do have evidence of that as well. Uh, I, in mm-hmm. fairness, I might, I might get the screenshot. Yeah, I'll get the screenshot. <laughs> oh, <it's all> in. <laughs> but um, I was probably a little bit tongue in cheek at that stage. To be fair, I'm not going to lie. Um, when the first goal comes in and the the way the goal they scored it as well, you know, it was a set piece that come into the box, come back out for Tongan. He's trying to head it back towards goal. He kind of loops it a bit and it ends up sailing into the back back post, and it's two one. And then at that said, at that stage, you know, we, we spoke about earlier on the live show about Martinez kind of pretty much learning from his mistakes and kind of at times he would have kept on doing the same thing over and over and over again and, and they wouldn't they wouldn't have got a result. But he threw on Fellaini and they saw the weakness, which was glaringly obvious, unfortunately, was the aerial threat. Yeah. Um Japan just couldn't cope with it and they rinsed them and it was just a bombardment. Fellini scores and you think you think this could be anything here now, you think they're gonna go on and then it's that corner right at the end. Four minutes added, ninety third minute. Yeah, but I thought like what else could they have done really? I mean, I thought they would have got rinsed in in extra time anyway because they looked like they had no energy whatsoever. And Perhaps Belgiumers but... seemed to be just they could feel the momentum. Yeah, the the, the main momentum was definitely with them. At it's De Bruyne then who's done fuck all in the game. Burns them just wonderful pace just goes past the few Jap- Japanese players that are there, and it's a lovely move. Um, Lukaku to be fair he'd missed a couple of opportunities he looked like it wasn't on at the night it's a lovely bit of skill just to let the ball roll yeah. over and that guy didn't mean it no like no he, he, meant, he, he, meant, he meant it he definitely meant it and then that guy that invisible guy from all season just um, sticks it in and in terms of it's Martinez um, his substitutions you know they've, they've, they've made a huge impact on the game and he gets to bring this team to another day yeah it's definitely uh, and but the thing is I, I feel like Japan exploited some weaknesses there. Oh, I think big, bigger and better teams will, will punish them for it. Yeah, no, I know that like the, the pundits kept harping on about it, but it's true. Um, but <laughs> we spoke about team spirit with well, a lot of teams here now, and the difference between it, Belgium for me very much looked like a team that was pretty much individuals. They didn't it's seem to Dutch, be. Like, no, really. Yeah, like, very similar. I always think there's there's very sim- there's a lot of similarities between the between the Dutch teams of probably the zeros. Uh, that very good team that they had and, and this current Belgium team wonderful individual players but probably struggling to get a system and a style of play and a couple of very very good players but similar players like Hazard and De Bruyne it kind of strikes me straight away the two of them seem to want to do the same run the same pass and all doesn't seem well there 
Um, but you know, at the end of the day, they're still as De Bruyne has proved by that that breakaway. You know, they they still have class players, and you know, one moment of magic from them can unlock a defense. So, gonna be hard to bet. I don't think they're gonna go all the way. Yeah. Um, moving on to the Sweden game. Sweden won. Yeah, Switzerland. Yeah. Have to confess, I was in work. I was only half watching bits and pieces of this. Um, but do you, like do you, do you see uh, Sweden as serious contenders, or do you think that they go on out to play? I think it's England. They play England. England will beat them. Do you think so? Yeah. Right. Well, we might as well talk about the England game because I think I was in work as well, and I didn't get the chance. The chance. We'll watch, actually, we'll watch back the highlights later, but I didn't get a chance to seriously sit down and watch it. I seen a goal, and that was it. And, yeah. It was one of those games. It wouldn't that, be fair for me to yeah. to really comment was, yeah, on it was and say they're, say they're good or bad because yeah. I'd like to give them their due if they if they mm-hmm. were. But you know, it was the type of game that you looked at it around at three o'clock and you're like, okay, I'm glad it's that one, not not as opposed to the England one. Whereas yesterday when I saw the Mexico Brazil game at three o'clock, I was like, oh no, yeah. I really want to like to sit yeah, down. Yeah, I think most problem. people would agree unless they're Swedish. So sorry, Swedes. <laughs> <Swiss. laughs> but they're still true. Yeah, you got as I say, you got to give them their due. So like. I think I'll be watching uh, with you know anticipation their game against England. This is to see because you know they could be like Japan for what I find fascinating and what I really really appreciate is what Ibrahim, which he pretty much left them for the qualifying campaign, and he 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 want, he stuck his foot in <laughs> his big foot of that in at, at the end of the campaign when they would qualified, wanting to come back, made some typical uh, typical comments of his you know World Cup needs me etc cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. They stood firm and they told him to you know go jump and he ended up in the visa ads and then they've they've played this good and they've got this far and you know when I when I say England will beat them I, it's not a guarantee it's not a formality they could they could put it up to them um but yeah no they're not going to go much further sadly but still a, a wonderful ro- ro- run for them and we'd gladly be in their position right now 100 percent and just you you look where we were playing there you were 2016 nothing so nothing nothing between the t- between the sides at the time could have beaten them as well yeah absolutely Hendrick's got a shot goes in yeah. Um, England. Yeah, um, they did enough, didn't they? They they eventually won a penalty shootout. Um, there's been a lot of talk about in the media before and about Southgate and um how this is a different England and you know it's not like the teams of the past, which of course they're going to be compared to. But you know, you you have to handle them. They 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 came strong on the penalty shootout. Um. I didn't think they played particularly well tonight. I thought a lot of the players were missing, and particularly in, in, in terms of an attacking sense. I thought the likes of Lingard, I hardly noticed them. Dele Alli, a dive aside, very, very little in the game. Um, Even Kane, he, he takes his penalties brilliantly, but there's, there's damn all play. He's completely gassed come the end. He's sitting trying to play the t- play, pretty much play the 10 role. So yeah, Colombia, even though they're missing Rodriguez, who's, you know, you can't just describe really how much of an influence he would have had in that game, particularly as he went into extra time, you know, you know, his his range of passes, I thought. I I always felt like his if Colombia were going to win, he was going to be the important factor. And um, I think I tweeted at the time on my way home from work when I when I saw the team that he wasn't even on the bench, that that's a potential game changer because he is that good. Yeah, you tweeted that, I seen that. Yeah, he, he is... He is, screenshot that into the video. <laughs> he is that good that you know, particularly the way the game was stretched. I think you know they would have he would have cut them open, but still, despite all that, you know you, you can't really say that England played that well. I didn't think they did. And it was yeah. um, they didn't really create a lot. I think if if Anathan, uh, Colombia were the probably the better team again. They didn't create a hell of a lot either, but they were definitely the one that I felt were doing more pushing, um, and they looked more composed on the ball. I thought. Like when you look back on it on the game, like it's a penalty for a bit of graveling in the box. Um that that's the breakthrough for, for, for Colombia. And then, you know, they bring on for or sorry, yeah, beg your pardon for England. And they they try and close off the game, then they bring Dyer on who and the game goes dire for for them, every pun intended. And Columbia overran them and but it still felt like they were gonna gonna do enough and then Yeah, it's all the big for save they were gonna do it. Yeah, I, I like we're like, obviously we were watching. We, we were lives. watching and kinda of getting ready and I was kind of, you know, thinking, Oh, this is half done and that shot completely caught me by surprise, like it was absolutely a screamer. What a wonderful, wonderful save. Now I felt nearly bad for Pickford at, at that stage because the next corner comes in and uh, it, it's an equaliser. I did, think, as I said to you, if Trippier wasn't there, potentially, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. he would have said it's one of those. It's, it's hard to know. If, like I saw some people giving Trippier a bit of shit. It, he made up for it with the penalty. Well, he did, but you know, you know, he, he he's a small guy. He gets up, he heads the ball. It's very unlucky to come back off the bar like that. Yeah, I thought um, he actually was one of England's best players in the night. 
Yeah, he, you, that was actually very good. He was decent. He was decent. Yeah, I mean, again, like like most English players, then he looked absolutely completely shattered come the end of the game, and the game was at pretty much at a walking pace. Definitely from an English point of view, particularly in extra time, I thought Colombia were the ones that looked the freshest. They looked the yeah. Fit, well, fit. you could see that even with Kyle Walker. I mean, he looked like he wanted to go down, <laughs> and he was like chittering. Like yeah, a fish. he did a ballerina dance there as well. But even you look at the likes of players that you would think would be you know the fittest. You know, the Henderson was down. Um, Kane was down even Danny Rose who was on looked shattered you know what I mean it was just all around the park even Maguire and the likes you know he's getting treatment at the end of the game but yeah. they just look completely and utterly jaded you you would probably argue that maybe England should have been more bold with their substitutions probably brought Rashford on a little earlier because yeah, yeah, you felt yeah. like his pace would yeah. have created a bit of he damage he might be keen now for them against Sweden because he's he's rested pretty much very true yeah very true Um. yeah because and even you know, laughed cheek as well. I was surprised that he didn't start. I thought Dele Alli is in a little bit of he has an eagle. He doesn't look fully fit. He had no influence in the game whatsoever. Yeah, he hasn't had a great World Cup at all. No, uh, and I, I think they're a better team with Loftus Cheek in the in that, or even Govard. Will, Will to, seems to think so. But. Yeah, yeah. Even, even, even if you don't want to to go with Loftus Cheek, I know he's you know probably doesn't have a lot of international experience, but even go two up front, uh, go Vardy and drop maybe Sterling a little deeper into midfield, because. Sweden are probably going to sit more compact and I think I think it'll be a case of England will have to try and break them down for large periods so the more pace that they can get on that team the, the better I think for their point of view yeah totally well uh, I think that we've rambled on a little bit too much there for for uh, our World Cup show um, I think there's much else we could talk about no it's so good it's been such it's a, yeah. such a wonderful competition we could ramble for hours um, but, but I love them VAR by the way yeah well, like, like, likewise not the perfect article definitely tweaks to be made but it made a huge huge impact on the competition yeah totally yeah. Well, that's been our World Cup show guys uh, don't forget to uh, like subscribe uh, please start leaving comments at the end of the videos um, it helps us out you know to answer your questions and stuff like that we have been harping on about doing a your comments show but you aren't commenting <laughs> enough uh he's watching the video and giving it likes but there's not enough commenting so we need a bit more back and forth with you guys yeah and tell us what you would like to see as well or what would you like us to talk about and we can gauge a bit more interaction that way absolutely and uh you know check us out we should be going live on instagram once a week now as well uh answering your comments and stuff like that so um yeah uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a great week talk to you soon